All right, if we're recording now. Uh, my name is Vanita Dillon, and uh, if you haven't already joined Facebook, uh, as I mentioned earlier, please do so. Uh, I post uh, a lot of updates and often uh, photographs of your students during uh, the school year, and it's uh, a welcome site for, for families. Um, I will also place my phone number in chat, and feel free to reach out to me if you need anything between now and orientation or after. Um, before we can get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Um, please do keep your devices on mute during the presentation. You will have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of uh, today's presentation by, our, by my colleagues here. Uh, please write your questions do, throughout our time together or at the end. Uh, and I will read out those questions to uh, those who have joined us. If you're not able to provide a question in chat because you're traveling or other reasons, uh, we'll open it up at the very end so you can unmute and ask your questions verbally. Um, if you think of something um, else after the call, please uh, send us an email at orientation at CSUM. Dot edu. We request that you not share too many uh, specifics about your student or a particular situation because this call is recorded and it's uh, uploaded on a public forum, our website, so we don't want too many details on here. For questions that are not related to health and safety, uh, you can again use the orientation at csam.edu email. Uh, to send it directly to me or wait uh, for future conversations with experts who can respond to those. Um, and with that, it is my pleasure to invite my colleagues to introduce themselves and take us through today's uh, presentation. Dr. Chow. Anita, um, I've actually got it up. So can I share my screen now? <laughs> uh, yes, you should be able to. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm Dr. Grace Chow, I'm the director of the Student Health Center. Um, this is a picture of what it looks like. Um, we can be reached um, basically at uh, healthcenter um, at csum.edu or at the extension 1170. Um, We're located near the dining hall so our students uh, have easy access. Um, just generally, we are here to provide integrated care, mind, body, spirit, um, and we are, our goal is to help eliminate or reduce um, any of the health-related barriers to learning um, for our students. Um, our hours are 8.30 to 5. Um, we are closed from 1 to 2. We stay open from 12 to 1 because a lot of students have lunch at that time and um, so to try to accommodate them and their busy schedules, we are open at that time. Um, we have counseling services as well with um, walk-in hours from 2 to 3 p.m. on Mondays um, through Fridays. And most of our appointments um, are pre-booked um, often the same day, but we do try to keep a schedule. Um, so it's important to know that we um, keep all care, confidential as required by HIPAA and FERPA laws. So that's especially important um, on such a small campus as we have. Um, so just to mention that we offer compassionate care to all. Um, we emphasize the importance of diversity and inclusion on campus. Um, these are some of the common services that we provide mainly primary care services, urgent care as well. And um, Dr. Wallace is gonna say a few words now. Sure, thanks Dr. Chow. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ian Wallace, Director of Counseling here at Cal Maritime as part of and in integrated with Student Health Services. I've been here for approximately 10 years. Um, I 
when I started, I was a one person counseling center. And I'll say just a little bit more about that in a second. But currently, it's not just me, but we have another full time um, counselor who's starting this fall, as well as one part time counselor um, who works exclusively remotely providing telehealth or telecounseling services. So we have a small team. Um, and it's I identify as male, white, cisgender, heterosexual, and we have a team that's diverse in terms of gender, sexual orientation, um, and, diver and racial diversity as well. So know that your student, if they're interested in meeting with a counselor, uh, hopefully they can find a, the right fit, whether that's expertise, identity, or otherwise. So some of the services that counseling offers is in, primarily individual counseling, co group counseling, couple counseling as well. And we do workshops and trainings for students, student leaders, as well as faculty and staff support. Um, we definitely encourage, my office is located in the health center and we have a satellite office that is actually in upper residence hall where our other full-time counselor, Marie Ekmegjian, will be starting um, again this coming semester. We have a daily walk-in hour where no appointment is needed, and that's every day, two to three o'clock in the health center, which is a very uh, highly utilized time. It's just a drop-in service and it's uh, effective. But that said, any emergency, a student's encouraged to come to the health center at any time during our operating hours and or to call uh, after hours or use emergency services, including police um, after hours as well. So we do follow confidentiality in terms of compliance with federal and state laws, as well as ethic, professional ethics. And that's a really important thing, um, just as any healthcare provider uh, provides confidentiality and privacy to patients, we do the same as well. And this also pertains to Coast Guard licensing, as you see on there on the um, screen. And as it pertains, there are many myths and misunderstandings about mental health and counseling. And I just want to clear the record and say counseling um, is not a barrier to licensure. So, you know, one in five students come to counseling each year. And counselors, so students license track, non-license track, um, seek counseling, uh, pursue licensure, pursue jobs where background checks are completed. Um, we provide records when there are release of information and we support students through that process, whether it's licensure with the Coast Guard or other licensing bodies, uh, as well as other employers with background checks. So I just wanna put that message out there. More information is available on the CAPS website. I'll kind of wrap it up here. I'll put the information in the chat, both from, to, contact me directly, as well as to look at our website, which is, I want to say, new and improved. So not just for the parents on the call here, but for my fellow colleagues, please check it out. There's lots of good information there. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. Are we moving to Angeli? Hey, I'm gonna, Anjali, would you like me to share your um, PowerPoint or do you wanna do that? Yes, please. Can okay. you share my- Of course, of course. All right. So hi, my name is Angela Acosta. I am the health educator here on campus. I work for Student Health Services. Um, my office is in Upper across from the housing offices. I do health and wellness programming outreach for the health center. And I oversee and I coordinate the peer health educator program. So um, I'm gonna give it to Travis. Hello, everyone. My name is Travis Lieberman. <clears throat> I'm the lead student peer health educator on campus. Um, uh, peer health education is a student-led uh, oriented education program that we help educate students on different health topics relating that help relate them to help better themselves, whether it be, you know, nutrition, mental health, alcohol and other drugs, or um, just kind of general health topics in general. Um, our approach to a lot of health education topics is um, harm reduction. So we make sure all the topics we teach are in the kind of avenue of making sure if they do it, they do it as safely as possible. All right. And that's just kind of what I just went over, reiterating all of our topics. And these are some of the events we do. Uh, we do every Thursday, 
uh, veggies down by the cove. So students have an opportunity to get fresh fruits and vegetables free of charge. We partner with local organic farms throughout the Bay Area. It's a great program. Uh, we offer <clears throat> fluffy therapy, which are therapy dogs we bring on campus. And then these are just a quick snapshot of events, but um, it's just to show you that there's always something to do health related on campus with our program. I also wanted to introduce um, our other peer health educator on the call, David. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm a um, peer health educator. There's one lead health educator, which is Travis, and then three of us peer health educators. I'm obviously the only other one on the call. Um, I've been doing this for a, about a year now. I started last year, um, and I will be continuing it this year. I was the one that was in all the photos that was just shown. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to um, just show uh, follow us on Instagram at Maritime PHE. Here is our information um, and Travis's information as well if you want to contact us regarding the program. Thank you. Thank you, Angeli. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Um, Next, we have um, Craig Dawson, who is our safety officer. Uh, Craig. Hi, thanks, Vanita. Uh, as Vanita mentioned, I'm Craig Dawson. Uh, I've been with Cal Maritime a few years now, and I am responsible for environmental health and safety for the campus. So for the last couple of years, that has had an awful lot of involvement with our COVID programs and protocols. Uh, hopefully that will continue to uh, lighten up and be less of an issue for all of us. Uh, but I work closely with uh, cadets on safety programs across campus and associated to the ship. And additionally, I am the designated person ashore for the ship uh, when it's out at sea. And my website also contains a great deal of, of reference information, including our Clery statistics, which are uh, crime statistics for the region and the, the campus that all campuses uh, share uh, to give more information for incoming uh, cadets. And I will go ahead and, and post our website on the link. And well, all of our contact information is available on our website as well. Thank you, Craig, for uh, for your information. And saving best for last is uh, Chief Gordon. Well, that's a nice intro. My name is Donnie <laughs> Gordon. Uh, that's not what you normally say, but okay. <laughs> My name is Donnie Gordon, Chief of Police. Uh, I am representing uh, 11 of us in total who are sworn officers, full, uh, fully sworn peace officers uh, that are um, uh, working the campus 24-7 uh, um, inside of the city. Our jurisdiction is, of course, the campus footprint, and it also is one uh, contiguous mile around the campus that we patrol. Um, I am very interested in, in, in folks who, who uh, attend, knowing that we're uh, very uh, supportive of the three C's. That's uh, comfort, confidence, and credibility. Uh, our vision statement uh, commits us to uh, highest ethical standards. Uh, we do uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. In fact, this police department is the most uh, diverse police department in all of the 23 campuses. Uh, you can look that up on Cal Matters. Um, I, I, I really try to uh, make sure that we know that we're doing a community policing model here and we reinforce that by, uh, here go my slides. There sorry, it. Chief, I'm so That's sorry. Okay. That's okay. There's our mission statement. I won't insult your intelligence, but we do run a community policing program um, and uh, we are a full service police department we do, uh, and we, we have a, a, another motto here besides our pride through professionalism is no call too small. So uh, we very um, much are integrated into the cadet and student lifestyle. 
Um, I always say, if you want to know what's going on on the campus, come see the police because we uh, get a lot of uh, interaction that uh, keeps us on the pulse of things that are going on around here. So uh, regardless of what you read about the city, uh, and they have some issues in the city, uh, this place, uh, because I believe because of the hard work that the officers and port security guards do is, uh, has been very effective at keeping uh, crime to a minimum, uh, and in some cases, uh, drastically lower than the city statistics would, would state. Uh, we also have a parking enforcement program here, and I, I like to always say, uh, if you look left, look right in a crowded room on the campus, uh, one of the folks around you will receive a parking citation. Uh, it, it, parking is a premium. So um, we, we uh, encourage you to call parking or, or rather use the uh, website uh, parking at CSUM uh, if you have any parking issues. And we have 911 services that geolocate and we have non-emergency phones located all throughout the campus and the parking lot areas. And we can also be reached at the uh, police department at csum.edu. Uh, and that's all I have. All right. Um, thank you, Chief. And uh, thank you, uh, all of the presenters. I'm going to keep an eye on chat to see if questions start popping up. Uh, while that is happening, I just wanted to um, let all the families know that we are still running short on. Um, or past photographs that are uh, required for submission by all the students so that we can have their um, IDs ready on the day they arrive. So please check with your student if they have not yet submitted a photo. I put the link in chat for them to do so at their earliest convenience. Um, I have about 70 photos so far and I'm trying to make 225. So. As family members, we're on the call, please help us out. Um, and while I'm still waiting for any questions to pop up, the presenters did such a fabulous job that there might not be very many. Uh, I wanna just walk through uh, the 21st. Um, please um, look, at, check with your students, not look, but check with your students what their arrival time is. That's the time that we hope to see you inside uh, the physical education and aquatic center building, uh, which is called PIAC often. And uh, once you're in there and checked in, your student will be invited to go pick up their uniform items while you will be greeted by many service providers on campus in uh, a fair type of a setting. Uh, you will also have access to what we call the inclusion center. Um, and while you are doing your meet and greet, uh, the students will be picking up their uniforms and that will give you about 30 to 40 minutes to arrive at your designated rest hall um, where you will be greeted by orientation leaders, your vehicle will be up unloaded and your student and any family member minus the driver of the vehicle will be uh, able to go inside the rest hall to set your student up. The driver must go back and park their car at lot O uh, and uh, make plans to meet up with your student either in the res hall or elsewhere on campus. Families are invited to um, uh, the president's welcome in RISA Auditorium uh, at 3 p.m. and a session uh, at 4 p.m. and then we'll have um, capping ceremony for you at from 5 to 5.30. So lots uh, to do on that day. Uh, we tried to simplify the, or, the uniform and swim assessment issues uh, this year. So we're hoping for a very smooth transition for your student as well as yourself. Um, question on in chat, any insight on the likelihood of bike theft on campus if a new cadet was to bring one? Chief? The, the, the Swami has his hat on. I, I, I would love to tell you that there's no chance of them stealing your bike. However, we do have some issues related to bike theft. Uh, we, we, uh, the, the good news is um, we have a very high recovery rate on bikes. So I think we're in the 80th percentile now with recovery of uh, stolen bicycles. And uh, 
in in the in the time that the bikes have been uh, stolen, we've done some uh, extra things like added uh, bike racks and and uh, information to, to to lower those numbers. But uh, per capita, yeah, we do have a, a bike theft problem uh, mostly in the northern end of the campus, but uh, we we've, we've managed to get most of the the bicycles return to their, their proper owners. So the officers, uh, they, they will scour the area outside of the campus because we have a pretty significant uh, homeless population uh, in close proximity and usually we can recover stolen property. So uh, good news and bad news. Thank you, Chief. Do the cadets have any tips on what students uh, should do to keep their bikes safe? Well, needless to say, locking them up is important and not leaving uh, gates propped open. And uh, don't, don't, you, you may as well hand it to them if you don't lock it up. So, uh, but um, again, it, it's, it's not as bad as, you know, I, the, uh, it, it's mostly opportunity when they do steal bikes. Uh, I think we've had two where they actually cut locks. Uh, we, actually caught the culprit in that case and, and put him in custody. And we haven't had any more lock cuttings uh, since then. It's mostly been people leave their bike land there and somebody picks it up and rides it away. So uh, again, a lot of it is preventative uh, versus, uh, you know, opportunity. Thank you. I'm not seeing very many more questions. Are there any uh, family members would like to unmute and verbally ask a question because they couldn't type one up? for any reason? All right, um, looks like um, our presenters did a great job. Thank you very much. I'd like to take a moment to applaud their uh, time and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I'd like for the presenters to hop off if they uh, so please and if family members have any questions related to orientate the day of moving, please uh, stay behind and um, let me know how, how I can help. Thank you again, um, everyone for being on the call. I really appreciate that and uh, giving back uh, 30 minutes of time into your day. See you soon. I'll stick around for a few. All right, since family members, parents are staying behind, any questions? Um, so I'm not, we're not limiting the number of uh, family members, parents uh, who can go uh, help the student. It's just that we need the car moved out of there. So you could drive the car back to lot O where you are going to park and then come back up. So it's not an issue at all for you to go in the, the res hall to see your student. So it's not limiting you. It's just keeping the cars moving. I hope that helps. Um, can we pick up the uniform early? Absolutely. Thank you, Leanne, for asking that question. So if your time frame is at, let's say your uh, move in check-in time is one o'clock, you're welcome to come around 11, so if, if that's what you'd like to do, and uh, get into the pickup of uh, uniform and then do your fair and grab a nice lunch on campus, check out the waterfront, and then when it, it's one between 1 and 1.30, we'd like for you to get to your rest hall. So anyone who wants to come earlier and just enjoy the day um, and pick up their uniforms, you're welcome to do that. Anything else? Okay, so I am really getting very excited to be seeing all of you and your cadets on the 21st. And, um, but before then, I'll see you on, Tuesday, on Thursday, today's Tuesday. I'll see you on Thursday uh, with our um, experts on the next topic. With that, have a great evening and um, be well. Bye-bye.